Okay, so you all should see the slide. You should see me in the corner and hear me. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back to Statics. Uh, we are in lecture five. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion of vector addition. Um, and so today might actually be a, a somewhat short lecture because um, th think of today as just a, a bit more practice with the idea of adding two vectors graphically uh, or trigonometrically. Um, we have a little bit of a different spin on it today, um, whereas last time we were solely focused on taking two vectors and adding them. Today, it's going to be more about, okay, now that we've got two vectors, let's sort of flip the script a bit and see if there's some other things we can determine about that, uh, that process. So a lot of the same tools, just solving for some, some different unknowns. Now, uh, just some housekeeping items. Uh, first off, I got the attendance grades up to date, so they're up to date as of today. Uh, and then for the homework, this is going to be the pattern that we follow for, the, you know, for a little while. So your last homework was graded and the solution's been posted. So you all can go on to the, uh, your My Grades. Not only can you see your grade, but if you look at the, the actual, you know, like the, the, the scan PDF, you should see where there's been, like if you got something wrong, you should see where there's been a mark and it shows you like it was marked up like we did it in class. So hopefully that, that makes it a little bit more like we were all uh, in the same room uh, together. So I would take a look at that and see if there's any, uh, things that you need to correct or anything you need to fix uh, on your, uh, 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 on your, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just make sure that, that you're comfortable with. And, and again, uh, if you ever have any questions dur uh, during class, don't hesitate. You can put them in chat. You can turn your mic on and say, Dr. Mike, I don't even know what you're talking about. Could you go back? Like, you're not going to hurt my feelings at all. But, uh, but we are going to go along with the same pattern. So homework, the, the last homework's been graded. Your homework, your 2.1, that was due today right before class. And 2.2 will be assigned after class, and it'll be due Friday, and we'll just keep on with that pattern. Today, uh, like I said, uh, we're going to talk about vec uh, a little bit more about vector addition. Uh, but before we get into that, are there any questions? All right. So... Let, let's sort of recap what we talked about uh, on Monday and uh, where we're headed. Uh, so really Monday, we introduced this uh, mathematical object, which we call a vector. And remember, vectors are different than, than scalars. A scalar has just a magnitude, but a vector has a magnitude and a direction. And that's really what distinguishes vectors, is that they are expressions of magnitude and uh, direction. Now, Vectors can be multiplied by a scalar to change their magnitude. So, you, uh, you know, for instance, if you had a vector and you multiplied it by two, it would be in the same direction, but double its uh, magnitude. Uh, and if you multiply by a negative number, you would change its magnitude, but you would also flip its direction. It would be along the same line of action, but it would just be flipped. Um, the, uh, but the real, real task and the real behavioral aspect that we wanted to discuss with vectors is a vector addition. And so the shortest way of saying that is that you add vectors in a tip-to-tail fashion. So, you know, if you've got a point and you've got, you know, vector one, so we'll call that F1, and you've got, I don't know, F2, you just take those vectors and you slide them, you keep them along the same orientation, and you would say, you can either do this is F1, in that, that, that symbology there, uh, maybe I'll write it like this so you can see, uh, and then this is, whoop, sorry, I got that wrong way, so F1 and then F2, and so that would be your resultant vector, or you could do it the other way. You could say, whoop, you get that a little neater. You could say that this is F2 and then add F1 on top of that. My scale isn't the greatest, so bear with me. And again, those resultants are the same length. My artwork is, is horrible, but you, you kind of get the idea. 
So it doesn't matter what order that you add vectors in. You know, F1 plus F2 is the same thing as F2 plus F1, and they follow that, that tip to tail uh, uh, fashion. Now, what we're going to do today um, is, first off, I have here that I say that we're going to do some more involved problems. That, that's one way of saying it. Uh, really what I'm trying to do is flip the script a little bit. So on Monday, really what we were in, invested in is let's just add some vectors. So you have vector one, vector two, let's just add them. Now what we're going to try and do is, is, is rearrange that a little bit. So let me give you an example. And again, this isn't going to use any skills that we aren't familiar with. Um, this should just be some uh, rearranging. So I have, let's say I have a car, and I have that car, and that car is being yanked with two ropes, okay? So rope, uh, you know, A, B, and rope B, C, okay? Now, what do I know? I know that the tension in rope B is three kilonewtons. So if you think of that vector A, B, I completely know what's going on in vector AB. I know its magnitude and I know its direction. I know its orientation. It's being yanked with a magnitude of three kilonewtons and its uh, orientation is 30 degrees from the horizontal. So if you wanted to write that on the board, you might say tension AB. Maybe you'll say, I don't know, that equals uh, three kilonewtons and then Oh, that's that's bad. Let me make that horizontal. At 30 degrees. So that might be how you write that. Now, um, so we know the tension in rope AB, okay? What's the goal? The goal is to pull the car with a total horizontal force of 4.8 kilonewtons. So the idea is I've got the uh, tension in rope AB. I'm pulling it with rope AB, but I'm also pulling it with rope uh, AC. And what I know is I want the resultant to be 4.8 kilonewtons, and I want it to be uh, horizontal. So now I know the resultant. The resultant is, you know, 4.8 kilonewtons, and maybe we'll write it like this, and we'll say zero degrees. So we know that. And so now what we're trying to figure out is the tension in rope AC, and we're trying to figure out that angle. So we, it, it, so this is what I mean by flipping the script. On Monday, we had two vectors, and we just wanted to find the resultant. And now I've got one vector, and I know what I want the resultant to be. What is the other vector that will make that happen? Okay, so... So it's a little bit ba uh, a little bit different, but really it just employs the same skills uh, that we've been using before. Uh, so let me uh, stop the share, uh, and just so it's on the recording, you can see this is what I was writing on the board. So this is the tension in AB. Notice I've got my little vector notation. So three kilonewtons at an angle of 30 degrees, and then my resultant is 4.8 kilonewtons at an angle of uh, of zero. So let me uh, let me share my um, share my screen there we go there's the cascade and here's the problem all right so let me make that a bit bigger let me get my keyboard and whatnot out of the way and let's go through this Okay, so again, you know, we've got this, uh, this problem. Let's, you know, make sure that we're clear on what we know. Um, what do we know? We know the tension in AB is three kilonewtons at an angle of 30 degrees, and we know that the resultant needs to be 4.8 kilonewtons that's horizontal. So it needs to be flat. And so the tension in AC is some magnitude 
at some orientation. And so the way that I've got that drawn, maybe maybe we'll draw it like that at some direction. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of first off draw out a graphical representation. Just to make sure that I'm that I'm understanding what's going on. And so that graphical representation is going to involve that tip to tail rule. Okay. So what do I know? Okay, so let's let's uh, first draw a vector a B and then draw a vector a C. It doesn't matter. We could do it the other way. I'm just going to maybe go alphabetically like a B and then a C. And so what do I know about vector a B? Well, it's three kilonewtons at an angle of 30 degrees. So Maybe I'll draw that in another color. I'll draw that like this. Okay, so this is vector AB. All right, so we'll call this AB. And we'll say that the magnitude of that vector is three kilonewtons, okay? Next, we have vector AC. Now, AC goes down kind of something like this, but I actually don't know how long it is. Here, let me, I, I'm going to erase that. I think I can do a little better. Uh, I actually don't know how long it is. Um, all I know is that the resultant needs to be flat. So maybe what I'll do is sort of draw it kind of like this and just draw it down until I get to a, maybe a flat line. So the magnitude of vector AC is something. I don't know what that is yet. And ultimately, this is the resultant. And again, forgive my, uh, my crude artwork. I do the best I can, but sometimes that can be a little difficult. All right. And that magnitude is uh, four, it's going to be 4.8 kilonewtons. Now, just off to the side, let me go ahead and put something. I'm going to put note just on notation. So, for instance, some, so when I say, you know, that, I'm going to say that's the magnitude of f just on a notation so it what i say magnitude i'm basically just saying how long is that vector okay sometimes what i might do is i might just write that as just f so that's the magnitude okay uh i either you know we'll just have the letter or i'll have the vector and use those like absolute value signs to indicate the uh uh the magnitude so if i if i write the letter just the letter by itself i'm talking about the magnitude if i write the letter with the little arrow on top of it i'm talking about the uh the vector so just to make sure that that we're, we're on the same page because as we get later on in the semester we might use those terms a, a bit interchangeably okay so I've got this, this term here. Uh, what I probably need to do is I need, or I've got this graphical representation. What I probably need to do is start putting some angles here. So let's, let's take care of these angles uh, first. Can anybody tell me what that angle is right there? That's 30, exactly right. Okay, perfect. So this is 30 degrees. Now, what about this one? We don't need to know the number. I, like you may, you may or may not know the number, but I want to know what is this angle. That one's a bit tougher, isn't it? That's okay. Let me give you let me give you a hint. 
So let me draw a line here and draw a line here. Now for the sake of discussion, let's say that this is vector AC. And we know that this is alpha. So if that's alpha, what do we have here? Okay, so it's it's not it, it's it's not the uh, it, we we don't really need the sign because uh, we don't know if it's a right triangle or not. So we can't just say you know sign of that. What well, what I'm saying is that if this is alpha, then this is alpha. So what I'm getting at is that this angle is alpha. That's what I'm getting at. And I want to make sure that's clear. Does, does, and, if, and if you don't understand it, I mean, that's, that's what we're here for. Please, you know, you know, ask that. Because I saw a few questions in chat. You know, we've got, you know, the, the law of cosines and all that. Like, we are going to use the law of cosines and whatnot to, um, uh, to, to uh, go through, you know, the math on this one. But I want to make sure that this, is, uh, that this makes sense. Um, is, that, is everybody clear that that's alpha? Any questions on that? Okay, no. Okay, all right, all right. So, so let's get, let me let me sort of redo let me sort of redo this part. Okay. So first off, all right. Let's consider that you have two parallel lines and that you have a diagonal cutting through them. Okay, two parallel lines. All right. Well, if you have two parallel lines, I propose that this angle and this angle, those are equal. Okay, and that, that just comes from geometry that whenever you have two lines cut by a transverse, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, that that angle, that angle, that angle, that angle, those are all equal. Okay. Now, let's look at vector AC. Okay. Let's take two parallel lines and let's cut it with this, this vector right here, this vector AC. So I'm going to do it like that. Okay. So this vector and that diagonal, those are the same. Okay. Now, if, if those if, if now look, look at the image, what do I have here? I know that this angle right here, I know that's alpha. So, you know, this angle here, that's this one. And if this angle is alpha, because those are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, that's got to be alpha. Okay. Does that part make sense? Before we move on to the triangle, does that part make sense? Okay. All right. Okay. Now, here's my point. The resultant, I mean, what, what did we know in the problem? What did the problem state? The problem stated that the resultant needed to be horizontal. So the resultant goes this way as well. So what I'm saying is that the resultant goes flat here. It goes flat here. So this angle is the same as that angle. So that's why I've drawn that as alpha. Now does that does that make sense? Good deal. And again like th this is what we're here for. So don't I mean we got plenty of time. So don't don't hesitate if you've got questions. That, that's why I want to make sure that we're, that we're good on this. Okay, so, you know, oh, I heard something. So would alpha be 30 as well? Not necessarily, not necessarily. That's a great point. Let, if you're okay on, on just constructing this image, let's get to the, uh, whoop, 
let's get to the the trigonometric computations. Let, let's let's handle that. Now let let's just draw this like a triangle. Okay. Okay, so let's just draw this out. What do I know about this triangle? So here's the triangle. Okay, what do I know? I know that this is 3 kilonewtons. I know that this is 4.8 kilonewtons. And I know that this is 30 degrees. Right now, that's all I know. This is alpha. Alpha could be 30 degrees. It could be 26 degrees. It could be 19.2. Uh, I have I have no idea until I go through and do the computation. So let's let, let's sort of uh, take some time with that. Okay. Now, what do I know? Okay. So let let's sort of draw this out like it was. You know, this is angle A, B, C. This is side B, side A, side C. Okay, so what do I know? I know this, I know this, and I know this. Okay, now what I'm after, what I'm after is I'm after this side, and I'm after this angle. That's what I want to find out. Okay, because I want to know how much do I need to pull that rope and at what orientation so that the resultant is horizontal. That's what I care about. So let's look at this and let's take them one at a time. Let's start off with the tensile force. Let's start off with this. Can anybody tell me, based on what we know, if I'm trying, you know, just go back to trig. If I'm trying to find out that side and I know little b, little c, and little a, what trig formula, what trig property am I going to use to solve for A? And keep in mind, this is not a right triangle. It's a, you know, it's a scaling. So what, what law am I going to use? The law of cosines, exactly right. And so that tells me, you know, what does the law of cosines tell me? It tells me that A squared is B squared plus C squared minus 2A, or sorry, 2 B, C, cosine A. So for our triangle down here, you know, just do the same thing. I propose that T, A, C squared equals 3 kilonewtons squared plus 4.8 kilonewtons squared minus 2 times 3 kilonewtons times 4.8 kilonewtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. Does that make sense? And so, so therefore, TAC is the square root of all of that. And so if you plug all that into your calculator, what do you get for TAC? Somebody help me out with that. 2.66. And not only did we get the answer, but we got it seconded. That's exactly right. So 2.66 kilonewtons. There we go. Okay. And so now we look at our triangle and we know one of the sides. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll write that in another color since it's, you know, 
Oh, I erased my thing. Ah, I'll just redraw that. Okay, so now we know that TAC is 2.66 kilonewtons. Great. Okay, so if I'm yanking this car and I want to yank it horizontally, I got one person yanking it three kilonewtons this way, and I got another person yanking it, you know, this way, I know they need to pull it with 2.66 kilonewtons of force so that the resultant just means that the car moves horizontally. But now I got to know at what angle they pull it. And so I need to know alpha. And so looking at this, there's probably a couple different ways of doing this. So I ask myself, okay, I've got the law of sines and the law of cosines. And I don't know about you, but the law of sines, man, it just looks like a much smaller formula to me than the law of cosines. It just looks like it's a lot less to deal with, okay? So I'm going to use the, the law of, um, of, uh, of, of, uh, of cosine. So let me, let me draw this. Let me put my unknown here in, a, in, in blue. Okay. So for the, the law of, of signs, remember you use the opposites, right? So if I'm trying to find the sign of alpha, or if I'm trying to find alpha, I got to use the sine of alpha. So the sine of alpha is to what? Three kilonewtons equals, and now I got to find an opposite of something that I know. So what angle do I know? Well, I know the sine of 30 degrees. So if I know the sine of 30 degrees, which number do I use on the bottom? Do I use the 4.8 or the 2.66? There you go. Exactly right. 2.66. All right. So exactly right. So I've got sine of alpha equals or over three kilonewtons equals the sine of 30 degrees over 2.66 kilonewtons. So what do I do? Well, put that three kilonewtons over on the other side. So the sine of alpha equals the sine or sorry, the sine of 30 degrees over or times what three kilonewtons over 2.66 kilonewtons right so the kilonewtons are going to cancel and then to solve for alpha alpha is going to be the inverse sine of all of this so And so somebody or some folks help me out. Well, what do we get for alpha? There we get 34.3. So we'll say we'll call it 34.3. I had a lot of people respond that way. So what do we know then? So how, how would we describe that vector? We would say that vector... AC is 2.66 kilonewtons at an orientation. And again, that orientation, you know, it sort of goes down, right? Because remember, go, if I scroll all the way back up and I look at my car, you know, AC goes, you know, from, it goes down this way. It goes, you know, down like that. So I'm going to draw that like this. And that is at an angle of 34.3 degrees. So what that means is that I got that first rope yanking at three kilonewtons at an angle of 30 degrees. If I pull that second rope with 2.66 kilonewtons at that angle, the resultant force will be 4.8 kilonewtons acting straight horizontal. And so it's basically looking at the... Um, the problem in a little bit of a different light. Instead of uh, I have two vectors and I'm solving for the result, 
Now it's, okay, I've got one vector, and I know what I want the resultant to be. What does the other vector need to be in order to achieve that resultant? Now, this one was probably a little bit of a, a quirky problem, so I want to take a sec. Um, first off, I'm going to give everybody a sec to copy down what they need, and then I want to see if anybody has any questions, because, um, you know, th this is a great time to go through this, because, you know, the, the, the trig... Uh, it's um, it, this might seem like a strange thing to say, but I actually think the trig's going to get easier here in a little bit. Um, so this is probably some of the more difficult trig that we're going to uh, explore. Uh, I want to make sure that what we're talking about uh, makes sense uh, here. So does anybody have any questions? Do we need to memorize the law of cosine formulas? I've never really been one to be a, a memorization guy. So my short answer is going to be no. I mean, but you are going to be having, you know, timed exams. And so um, it wouldn't hurt to, you know, make sure that you can recall some of this stuff. Uh, I, I'm not going to make you memorize it, but there is a pattern that goes along. So it's not that hard to, to sort of uh, get down. I will say this, um, uh, I'm not, we're not going to be using, you know, those obscure, you know, if you take the cosecant and multiply it by the tangent squared, you get this, like all those trig identities, we're not going to be using uh, any of that. I'm going to stop the share. So, so you don't, you don't have to worry about that. And I mean, you're going to have your resources available for, for exams or whatnot. I mean, they're going to be online, so that's not going to be a big deal. Any other questions? All right, well, before we call it, and I want to mention one other thing about, like, the way that I, I conduct class. Like, I always want each lecture to focus on a given topic. Um, uh, would you use 2.66 or the non-rounded version because I got 34.26 as my final answer? Um, I don't know that it really matters, I mean, because... Let me say this, what you're talking about is is more on the mechanics of what numbers to use. What I'm more concerned about is, did you do the computations correctly? Like, let, let me put it like this. Um, regardless of the rounding, you did the problem correctly if you're talking about 34.26 degrees versus 34.3 degrees. So the rounding doesn't really bother me. Usually, like, I have a TI-89, so, like, I do a, a, a calculation, and then I'll just use the previous number in my, uh, in my calculator just because I'm kind of lazy, and it's, <laughs> it's easy for me to do that. Um, so I'm fine if you use either. It, it really doesn't bother me. Again, I'm, I don't really get too worked up about significant digits because um, it, it, in actual engineering practice, I mean, it, it, at least for, for civil engineering, it doesn't it doesn't affect the final product of what we design and build all that much, if I'm being honest. Not that it's not important, but. It just tends not to affect our final answer. Any other questions? Can I erase this? All right, um, one of the things I want to mention uh, just about class and the way that, way that I run the class is I want each day's lecture to focus on a particular topic. Um, and so, you know, we cover that topic, and then if we finish a few minutes early, 
um, we'll end class early because I don't see, I don't want to like dredge, you know, the class on like, okay, let's spend the next five minutes talking about something that we won't cover uh, until tomorrow or until Friday anyways. But I do want to kind of introduce what's coming next. Um, and, and you'll see where I'm getting at. So up until now, we've been talking about adding, you know, we have uh, force one and we have force two and ultimately trying to determine, you know, this resultant. Okay. Uh, and now don't get me wrong, you know, it might take, you know, dust off some trig skills to figure that out, but ultimately that's a doable problem, you know, with, with a little bit of time. But what if I have a point and I have, you know, like a bunch of vectors? Well, I could take these two, figure out the resultant of these two, and then take this resultant, add it with this one, take those, uh, those two, get a resultant, add it with this one, and I would be in a trigonometric nightmare really, really quickly. That would just get to be a bit much, okay? And so I want to try and develop a technique to add not just two vectors, but n vectors, like a, 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 a you know, doesn't really matter how many vectors. And so we're going to do that by recognizing a, a couple of points. And we'll talk about this on Friday, but I want to sort of introduce the concept because it's something I want you to chew on. Okay. Remember that uh, scalar multiplication Remember scalar multiplication. Remember we said, okay, if I have a vector and I take that vector and I multiply it by three, then I get the same vector that is uh, along the same orientation, but it's just three times as long, okay? Well, if that's the case, I can take that vector and multiply it by any number to get the, the, the vector along the same orientation. So if you think about it this way, um, one way of expressing a vector, just any arbitrary vector, I can express that as the magnitude of the vector at some orientation, and this could be A vector of length one. Okay. In other words, you know, if I have a vector that represents a 15 pound force going this way, I could represent that as a vector that has a length of one multiplied by 15 pounds. Okay. That's something to keep in mind for what we talk about next time. And the second thing to keep in mind is rectangular versus polar. In other words, if I have, you know, maybe some some vector like this, you know, really what we're talking about when we do this like you know, some magnitude at some orientation is we're kind of representing that as if it's a, a, a polar coordinate, you know, r comma theta. Instead, if I use this tip to tail fashion, I could maybe represent that as this vector plus that vector. And so maybe we'll call this fx and Fy. And so, you know, if I look at this, maybe I can write it like this. Well, if I take this and combine it with this, what we're going to arrive at, and we'll talk about this on Friday, is 
this. Now, let's just put it like this. You probably don't know what I'm talking about right now, and that's fine, because on Friday, we're going to explore this in some pretty significant detail. But what this is called is I, J, K vector notation. I'm just using I and J because I've got the X axis and the Y axis. If we were doing the Z axis, we would have a, a K vector uh, out on top of that. Now, this might look complicated. You might not believe me, but I promise you this is actually a whole lot simpler than what we've been doing. But we kind of have to, you know, when you, when you start exploring this stuff, you kind of have to understand how vectors operate from that tip to tail fashion. And once you understand that, you can understand how this stuff operates. What we're going to do next time is we're going to explore how we can take a vector and split it up into X and Y components. And if you could split any vector up into X and Y components, you could just add up all the X components, add up all the Y components, uh, and there's your answer. And it makes it actually makes the math incredibly, incredibly easy to perform. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have. I'm not going to make you do anything with this. Don't worry. I, I, the only reason I'm talking about this is because I, I want to sort of just plant the seed in the back of your head. I just kind of want you to think about it because on Friday we're going to discuss – how we can take this and come up with this uh, IJK uh, notation. Uh, I have a homework for you uh, uh, that's due Friday. It's problem, I believe it's 212 uh, in the textbook. It's very similar to what we talked about uh, today in class. There's a weight that's being uh, lowered, and so the weight is going up and down. We have a, uh, a vector going this way and a vector going this way, and we have to determine the angle and orientation of the other rope to keep the resultant vertical. Uh, but with that, um, I'm going to leave you to it. One other thing I, I will mention, uh, just as a, as a side note, a couple of things. Uh, maybe one hint on the homework is don't forget complementary angles. So, for instance, if I have uh, an angle that's, let's say, 37 degrees and I want to figure out this angle, that angle is 90 minus 37 degrees. That does help out a bit when you're uh, doing this homework assignment, so don't uh, forget that. Um, any questions about what we worked on in class today? Because that's going to be the, the, the critical component uh, for the homework assignment. Here, I'll erase this. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. That's pretty much all we have today, so we're ending a little bit early. Just chew on uh, what we talked about at the end. Uh, get that homework done by Friday at 1 o'clock, and that's all I have. Uh, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you on Friday.